Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the October 11th meeting of the Monroe Inland and Wetlands Commission. My name is Jason Gray. I'm the chairman. First order of business, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, next I will go through the roll call of the commission members present tonight. Starting at my right is Ross Masteracco. Next to him is Jim Stewart, who is a professional engineer and a licensed land surveyor. You're at the head of the table over there. I'm Jason Brady. Yeah, we changed you up, Jeff. <laughs> About to be seated to my left is Jeff Shamas who is a certified uh, professional wetland scientist, certified ecologist, and soil scientist. Um, he is our vice chairman. To his left is Lois Spence, our secretary. <clears throat> um, Donna Straczynski, who is our inland wetlands and land use coordinator. Scott Schatzelein, who is our town engineer and land use director. He is a professional engineer and an inland, our inland and wetlands agent. And Rebecca Wood is our recording secretary. That everybody moves. Here. Did you end up getting your meeting packet? I did. Last and night. Jeff, did you get yours? Last night. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Got it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm about to read the Inland Wetlands mission statement. The objective and purpose of the Inland Wetlands Commission is to provide for the overall protection and preservation of inland and wetlands watercourses within the town of Monroe. In the normal course of our meetings, we will hear public hearings and other applications. The protocol for public hearings is to have an applicant make a representation or presentation to the commission, during which and after which the commission will be asking the applicant questions. The commission will then review town, staff, and other independent comments. The meeting will be opened up for public comment. I will ask that all comments be made to the chair of the commission or the commission. After any and all comments pro, in opposition, or of a general nature are made, the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond. It is not necessary that the applicant respond, but generally in the best interest to do so. There will be no further opportunity for new questions unless new material is entered in as evidence or testimony during their response. Please keep any and all comments pro, con, specific to wetlands related matters. Other applications that do not involve a public hearing will follow a similar format with the exception that there will be no public comments allowed. The meeting follows our published agenda unless otherwise amended. Our agenda is up here on the front table in green if anybody's interested in getting a copy. Um, are there any changes to our agenda tonight? Um, there are... Let's see, 1413 is... Well, I guess we could indicate that uh, 1413 <clears throat> requested to be postponed to the next meeting. I had kind of prematurely uh, got them on this agenda. We uh, just received their submission packet. They um, got my comments and they want to address the comments and <clears throat> be ready, a little bit more ready at the next meeting. What is the date of the next meeting? Do you know? 25th. Thank you. And um, we did receive some correspondence from the, um, an interoffice memo from Gabe, our inland wetlands inspector, just apprising you of a um, situation with, and I don't have that memo, yeah. thank you, for a uh, 15 hour haul. And I think that's it. You received comments from Scott. So that's all. So the only change is the 1413? Yeah. Oh, in 27, well, 27 Dogwood Wood will discuss, but Mr. Silver will not be at tonight's meeting. Okay. okay. That memo. The inter-office memo you should have just gotten tonight. It's just a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. It's probably somewhere in my pile. I'll deal with it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda is minutes of September 27, 2017 meeting. I will entertain a motion regarding these minutes. Move to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion or changes? 
All those in favor of approval of the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Motion passes in the unanimous Good for you. <laughs> Fantastic job, everybody. Yep. <laughs> All right. I will open up the floor to general uh, public participation. This is a period of time reserved for public participation. Not, I ask that any uh, comments or, or questions not be related to any items on the agenda tonight. Is there anybody that wishes to make any comments? Hearing none, moving right along. There is no application hearing determinations, no subdivision reports or recommendations to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, there's nothing in our regulated activity section. Moving right around to enforcement, uh, remediation submissions, ICP 2016-11, one uh, 14 13 no term pipe has been postponed to our next meeting as discussed. And moving right along to ICP 2016-05, 35 Ridgedale Road, the Del Medico owner, Hop Engineer, Thomas Attorney, restored a filled wetland in Upland Review area. This was tabled from, uh, tabled from our last meeting. Um, the review submission continued from August 23rd, 2017. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, Attorney Dominic Thomas, Cohen Thomas, 350 Main Street, Turbo, Connecticut, representing the applicant. Uh, Matthew Pop, environmentalist here, he has the revised plan. Yeah. As you may recall, at our meeting, um, Thanks, sir. we were early September meeting, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, your August, our August meeting, the first time. We were here, there were some suggestions on uh, changes and, uh, to the uh, remediation plan. And uh, uh, Did you hand them out already? Yeah, she did. That, that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Here's is there is one short? Thanks. No, no, no. Yeah. You, you got them all? Because I, I have a full size one, even though I don't. And um, uh, we. I believe we have addressed, uh, uh, Matt Pop has addressed the uh, issues with respect to uh, uh, the remediation. I do want to uh, bring up and point out what I pointed out last time, that um, while the area uh, that is an encroachment, it is the encroachment that my client did into the open space area, uh, was one issue. The other issue related to the area along, uh, which would be the northerly area uh, along the driveway, uh, and the construction of this subdivision, the construction of this house took place sometime between 86 and 88. In 88, it was purchased by my client in, um, I believe, May of, of September of 88. Uh, so construction was primarily finished. The wetlands uh, regulations did not go into effect until May of 1988, which was a surprise to me. And this was a basically a cut and fill lot in the uh, subdivision. I think the last time we were here, we also we presented to you the uh, recorded map showing the uh, uh, original subdivision map from back in 1986. Uh, at, that, at that point, it, it was quite apparent it was not a situation where you had a soil scientist laying out the uh, wetlands. We did, and we presented to you the uh, Tom Petraeus' wetlands. So with that, I'll turn it over to Matt Pop to explain how he addressed the concerns of the commission. Uh, Matt Pop, landscape architect, professional wetland scientist. The open space por portion of the project is back here. Here's the property line right through here. And we're restoring uh, this area right here. Um, there was a town wetland line um, that was, you know, came through approximately through here. We had Tom Petrus go out there. They excavated some uh, test pits through here, and Tom Petrus came up with a wetland line. Wetland, those uh, test pit locations were put on uh, this uh, survey. And the, again, this area right here is being restored, this wetland area. And then this upland area is also being restored, and this will remain as an upland along uh, the uh, property line here. We're proposing uh, boulders for demarcating uh, the um, the open space that's off the site. At the last meeting, it was requested that in this vicinity right here, the driveway we had a, a the driveway continued right through here, enough for you know a parking space or two. And that was requested um, to re to remove that parking space uh, just to get some more uh, buffer into the wetland. Uh, so now the 
driveway edge comes through here, so the driveway doesn't come back through here. So we just removed that section of the driveway. Um, the plans remain, other than that, the plans remain uh, the same as the last time. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. What is your definition of the boulder? Uh, usually uh, it's uh, more than a two-man boulder, more than two people could carry. So you would need an exca a piece of equipment, machinery to lift it. Are there details on the sheet? No. I haven't had a chance to look at this since we just got it. But normally it's, you know, it's a... Well, we've had people bring in, you know, this is a... Boulder. No, it's, it's two people. It has to be bigger than two people can move. So... But you could put on the, you know, if you wanted to put on the one cubic yard, I think that would be, or larger, you know, that would be and satisfying. their placement is what? Oh, they're probably placed uh, maybe 10 feet on center or so, so, right along the, right along this property line through here. Uh, they also kind of extend right at the wetland line here, we're restoring the extent over this area too. So. Matt, is there a, like an existing conditions plan before this mitigation plan, which would show the basics? Um, there's a lot of lines mm -hmm. and it's difficult to interpret the old wetland line, the line that was delineated, the line, the area that was filled, and then what you're restoring. Just wondering if there was a simple kind of a survey that shows the plot um, and then has those lines on it before you then, you know, kind of place proposed grading and and uh, and the, the plants on it. Um, there is one, I'm not sure if I have one, but like the old wetland line from the town, I would disqualify that because I think that was done possibly, I don't know how that was done. Um, it's, it's a little bit upslope of the, the Tom Petrus line, but it, it's, it kind of follows what you, I anticipated, right? In this area right here, there's a depression mm -hmm. and there's some, um, there are some white pines there that were recently taken down. So that depression right there, where the, the, wet, the white pines would indicate to me uh, that they are, that's an upland area. So that was another uh, point, um, reference point, so that the wetland line would be to the north of this uh, depression down through here, which top features this line that indicated. So, uh, I have the, it's only 11 by 17. But this is the survey that was originally done. Let me see what I Like before the house was built or something? That, no, 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 no. Oh. This is the, oh, the map. Uh, yeah, that, that's the full size survey. This is the survey we had done after the issue of the uh, service violation was, was put in. So we had a survey done of it. The, again, we, we presented, uh, I believe, and it was a it was a small size uh, copy of the recorded uh, map <coughs> we gave, I think, to you uh, last time that the map was recorded. It's, it's a, uh, that's the plan that uh, you're yeah, looking at now. Yeah. But I think that was the plan that you had up. I think that was yeah, the, that, the, the plan. Okay. Yeah. Lewis Associates. Yeah, that was just a number. That, yeah, yeah, that's, that's just the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the one with the red lines, that, that one right there, kind of shows the test pit locations. Back in 1986, 85, or 86, which 
which was the subdivision map. And this lot was an isolated lot. In other words, you had the main lots over on the other side of the open space, and then this one lot. And uh, the, one, the lot was basically like this, so there was a cut and fill mm -hmm. out that way. So that's the way the lot was developed. And I, you know, when I first became involved in this, my first reaction was, well, let me go look at the uh, wetlands application when they did the subdivision, and that's what I was informed that the wetlands uh, uh, wetlands regulations were not from, uh, in town. In, in town until until May of 1988. So it was clearly not at the time the subdivision was done. But if there was work in the wetlands being done at that t before that time, back through I think it was 71 or 72, it would have been DEP. Right, but there would have been no, you know, no record. There was no record or no regulations. Yeah. So the limit, um, going back to the plan that you submitted, is there a, a limit of disturbance that was on, on this plan? On the remediation plan? On the remediation plan, is there a, a limit of where the proposed, of that uh, disturbance was or existing conditions? Well, the first thing we were dealing with is the fact that Everything, uh, whatever you want to call it, I think it's, I'm not sure what the direction is. Everything to the right of the property line is encroachment. So we had to, you know, when you say disturbance, it was it's all disturbed. It was all disturbed. Okay. That's, it was an yeah. encroachment, yep. and it has to be filled in. It was all okay. That, and that, you know, it's an encroachment, so we have no issues with that. Whether, no matter what it was done, we have to take care of it. The area along the um, border, uh, where the driveway is, that is what we're trying to address. We had Tom Peters do the test pits and everything, and looking there, there were a lot of other issues. Rather than get uh, issues as to exactly where the line is, the point is to create a uh, remediation plan and a planking plan that addresses the concerns. I mean, Matt can address that better. Uh, obviously, Matt can. But, but, you know, the, dis the limit of disturbance is, you know, basically like, you know, for a hearing. And so is your elevation 374, 376, those are proposed elevations? Um, yes. That's the 374, that's proposed. 376, so. That wetland line is right through here. The, you know, three seventy four over here is actually in the wetland. Cross hatches on the property. Um, I don't even know where to describe it. <laughs> oh, the, by this area right here? Yeah, what does that it's represent? Just, just a no. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see just that. Just a no uh, seed mix. <laughs> that's an upland, right? Is that, that, is that's not upland. part of the wetland? Uh, correct. Okay. And then there's a depression right here that drops down maybe two feet or so. so it, Right through here. That's still uh, an upland area. Was that tested for um, since it's depressed? Um, Was there, it tested there, for wetland soil? Again, that's where the white pines were growing. And there is uh, another plan um, that shows the test pit that Tom Peters done. I did, I think, was right on the edge of it, like right here. And then the, the depression's here. I think the test pit was right on the edge of it. Um, if I could provide some clarification and answer Jeff's question. Um, when we mapped this out initially when we were determining the violation, we went by this map that's in the town clerk's office, 1891, and it's the subdivision map of uh, Field Ridge Estates. Okay. And on this map, it depicts the wetlands, which, are, which is this line here. 
This line is the wetlands that's depicted on the subdivision map. And the subdivision map has a note on it that says that all lots, uh, no, excuse me, inland wetlands marked in the field by Kenneth Stevens of Soil Science Services. So um, it's a, you know, we took it to be a real, you know, uh, determined wetland. So uh, we had uh, anticipated that they would be doing test pits to just see, you know, exactly what elevation, you know, where that wetland is. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, that's that's to answer the question that came up. That's yeah. okay. that's where that line came from. Okay. Um, Mike, you in the area of encroachment where you have the wet meadow mix, the area around it is not meadow. Am I correct on that? I see a tree line um, here, and it seems to me that's all pretty heavily forested. Uh, back here is pretty heavily wooded uh, to, the, where the, to the right and over here down on the bottom uh, of the right. Uh, over here, there is, it's a red maple swamp. Um, Over where? I'm sorry. Um, up, all up through here. Right, okay. All up through here. So why are we interjecting a meadow in the middle of it? Um, well, it just it has to get seeded with something, so, you know. Well, wouldn't trees be better? Uh, well, there, we are proposing trees here. And well, that's over there. That's that's significantly. So, you know, and there's no, uh, there's, here's the scale. You know, that's, that's quite a way. I'm concerned around about sun-loving invasives. And the more trees we plant, the less likely we are to have a problem with them. So it seemed to me that, that putting a meadow in, in between two stretches of, of um, woods doesn't make a lot of sense. I would like to see it continue to be woods all along and make it as heavily wooded as we can, because that's what it was originally. Well, the only thing here is the only th that concern I kind of have with planting trees, you know, in the wetland. If it does flood, um, then the trees may not survive. We just have to kind of put them in at a, maybe at the smaller size. But we could certainly put in more of them. You know, I would just suggest again recommend smaller size that I grow in, you know, in the wet condition now. Like, so you, you, I wouldn't go to a nursery and buy a two-inch caliber tree because uh, it's more likely grown in the dry. Mm -hmm. And if you put them in here, they're going to die. But we can certainly put in um, a lot more uh, smaller trees that are grown. Well, are we going to be more subject to your brows? Um, maybe not browsing, but probably maybe rubbing on them. So that, um, hmm. you know, if, that, if their browsing becomes like a concern or so, then the deer could always get fenced. You could always use more spice bush and um, mm -hmm. silky dogwood. Yeah. Okay, so would you would you, you be amenable to adding to your to your um, list your plant list to include those? And how many would you uh, say that we could put in? Well, spice bush is good then. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> if they don't so, like it, more to it. So. Um, spice bush. Okay. Scott, was your question answered about the wetland? Which one? You had said you were trying to find out where the the wetland line was or the amount of wetlands. Well, I mean, my initial thought was that you know we have a subdivision map that shows a wetland. Uh, and then it obviously was, um, well, not obviously, but the, the, it shows disturbance. And um, the request to, the, to them was that they should try to either do test pits or a lot of times when they're doing remediation work, it, it kind of, it's, it's not clearly defined until they're actually doing it yeah. and they're covering it. 
That would be another thing too, is that when this work is done, you know, somebody will have to be out there to, to double check to make sure that we're taking the, all the fill out of the wetlands. So, you know, even well, is, that, we have is that in the area that's going to be excavated, though? Um, in this area, yes. Yeah. So even though we're removing the soil through here, but um, you know, if the wetland. I mean, uh, on the, the on the property itself, not on the mineral okay, property. Over here. Yeah, because that's that's the, the yeah. area in question. If I'm if I'm hearing everybody correctly. Well, that fill. It's our position that fill was pre wetlands regulation, so mm -hmm. there's, there is no violation. There's no violation of that. It may be a violation of what DEP had at the time, but the wetlands regulations in a community. And this is what shocked me, because most wetlands regulations went into effect between 72 and 74. And so there isn't, so the, the subdivision was approved, I believe in 85 or 86, I believe 86. Site work uh, was done before, you know, the clients got, my clients got involved with the builder. There was, we reviewed things like uh, septic maps and everything like that. So more than likely, when he did the cuts and fills, and uh, I mean, I, I don't know what was transpiring back in the mid 80s, but when he did the cuts and fills, he filled right out there to make the place level because that's where the driveway basically came in, was on that side of the property. So he leveled the property to do the cuts and fills and uh, that creates a different issue than the issue of encroachment. The issue of encroachment being it's somebody else's property. So we have to remove it so that, you know, that required, you know, no matter when it was done, we have to remove it, and by removing it, we're impacting the what you know, the, we, we have to restore it. So what, what the proposal is, rather than say we don't have to do anything along that boundary, because it was more than likely done before the wetlands regulations went into effect, the response was, okay, fine, what can we do? And Matt came up with a plan how to address that area along the uh, wetlands, along that boundary of the property on the property. And so you're removing the gravel driveway. Uh, of course, that. Not, no, right, right, not the whole gravel driveway. There's no just, access. Yeah, yeah, not right the whole here. gravel driveway, but right right where the X's area. are there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just mainly through here. It comes through here. It's a compacted gravel driveway. That's being, you know, well, well, we determined that it wasn't needed because obviously he no longer needs to get behind from that side like he did before. And, uh, and the other thing to point out is that you see something on there called the roof. The, uh, yeah. the remove, that, that structure is being removed. Mm. It does encroach very slightly. And there were other encroachments that have already been removed, like a propane tank and stuff like that. While you're on the driveway, just clarification too, where the information came from is, um, we have a plan, a site plan, which was the plan, I believe, when the garage shows the garage, the house, and it shows a pool, which isn't, I guess the pool's not there anymore, right? Um, but it shows, what it shows is, it doesn't show this driveway configuration. It shows a driveway which comes into this side of the, the but it, it doesn't swing out that far. It's this, this, this part of the driveway right here on this uh, uh, plan that was submitted when it was built is 22 feet from the property line. So 22 feet from this property line. The plan that is up on the, the wall there is uh, 20 scale. So let's just see where we are. We might be the same place. Uh, it might just be the ceiling, so hold on. Close. Sometimes I can find the right scale here. Um, the, the, this is 15, 60, it's about 17 feet. So on their plan, it's about 17. On the plan that I got here that was originally done, it was 22. So it's not as far off as I thought it was. But that's, um, that's just a clarification on the driveway. So this, this driveway is kind of shoved over closer to the property line than it originally showed on the original site plan that came to the town when these were built. Um, a little bit, Se uh, 18 versus, 17 or 18 versus um, 22.
Back to my meadow. Uh, if we're going to try not to have that be a meadow, what's the name of the seed mix you can use that has trees and shrubs? Yeah, there's a, there's a, I know, mix. There's a mix that has, New it England does have some roadside, kind. I think it might be. Yeah, yeah we I'm, could, sure, I'm sure. New England roadside. It is roadside. control roadside mix. No, yeah, I, Would that be appropriate yeah, to put so. in there, do you think, instead of meadow mix? Um, in the, uh, in the, in the, the, the new wet one? Area. Yeah. I haven't been out to the site, so I don't know how wet yeah. this. It's going to be wet. I can check the, the well, What about mix. just using wet mix? So, well, there's no wet woody mix. plants in the wet mix. So, but I, I can check it, though, and see. You know, if it has, I, I think it does have, like, arrowwood and then maybe um, winterberry so in it. But I think that would be fine. So how many extra trees um, of the silky dogwood or the spice bush or both? Or we, if you suggest a spacing um, for shrubs, five feet, six feet. Um, yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep the, his, his, uh, his budget. I'm concerned about his budget. You know, when you have a large area like that and you're putting plants you know, five feet apart, um, it does get costly. Uh, so, so yeah, but you might be talking about uh, 12 bucks, 15 bucks a plant. Um, but regardless, I, you know, I'm not designing it for you. I'm just trying to recommend some spacing to um, fill in some of these gaps that are out there. I would prefer maybe just going with you know, more of uh, the, the trees and just put them at the smaller size that we have to somehow protect them. And in there, um, I think in the long run, I think you probably get what you're looking for, uh, more so than planting the shrubs. Well, our charge is just to get it restored mm -hmm. to where we want it, where it needs to be. Size trees would you recommend? Yeah, I would say you know maybe there's there's a dozen trees like a ton of these that you can leave or you can add. No, that we can you know, add and okay. Yeah, no, just just looking at the you know, <coughs> uh, uh, you know probably the sizes on here, the seven and eight feet. Mm. Which 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 one? Um, you know, it could either be like the red maple or the swamp white oak. Um, you know, if we can't get those, it could be like a pin oak. But more than likely, it would probably be uh, you know, the, the red maple. Okay, so you're saying 12 trees? Is that what I hear? I'm only so that we can have everything down on paper that's very well. And we're still talking spice bush too, as well as silky dogwood. I like spice bush. Especially since the deer don't eat it. That's the one thing that's a little bit more guaranteed to grow. Well, the, you have clethra on here. You can always. Yeah, I'm surprised I don't have the spice bush. Yeah. That'd be a good one to have on them to add. Um, you know, if, if they were on a, the smaller size, you know, maybe there's another like 25 of them or so. You know, I don't know if that's going to, when they get put in, it's still made it look like it's still a meadow. Okay, so because I'm not sure what I'm hearing. 25. 25 total of what? Um, uh, shrubs, but I, I think I'm going to recommend the spice bush. So I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would say like in a perfect condition that it has to be certain things. 
plan because we can't get it, then we're but if but I understand. So we're we're talking about an extra twenty five shrubs and a certain amount of trees. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we did I, I wrote down ten. Is that what you said a dozen trees? A dozen trees? See them in the mail. Amazing what happens when you get a little chance to look at it. Um, wetland markers are going to go where? Um, well, do I even see them on here? This is off the property, so we were, we weren't going to propose any uh, over here. No, I don't mean on so. up there. I mean that you could still put them in between the boulders, or it's you know, at varying yeah, points yeah. among the boulders. If they're in this area here, I'm not sure what your usual space is. It's like 50 feet or what's what's this um, this dotted area going to be again? A, a no mow a seed mix because portions of that driveway kind of creep over over here. There's a lot of gravel in through here. So wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't you guys want the the markers along this edge of the just off of the driveway here? If it's a wetland marker, it probably should be. Well, the markers are, are um, written in a way where they're used. They're used more as, uh, they're not wet, they're not yeah. marking wetlands. They're marking. Regulated they're, area. They're marking regulated area. And, and in most cases, it's the limits to yard or area, driveway, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be maintained. So beyond the markers would be not maintained in any way. So the markers, you know, naturally I would be looking at the way they have this laid out. I would say, you know, put, put the markers running, I don't know, uh, five feet or so off of the driveway here coming up and, and then, you know, coming across here just a little, I think, coming, coming here and then over here. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. I think we were saying that, you know, that we don't feel like that there was a violation on this area here, putting in the plantings, kind of this goodwill gesture, and now we're, we're getting markers uh, placed there. There is a distinct uh, slope right through here that drops down, and you can definitely tell that there's a, you know, well in there, it's, it's very noticeable. Um, we're gonna make a distinct grade change. So I would, I would prefer, you know, if they were doing markers that we just know protect, you know, the maybe back to it here. Okay, but also on the property line extending down to, uh, along the, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Along the open space. Right. Along that, that line. Yeah, so, yeah, I think if they came through here and, and down over. Well, how about 10 feet off the wetlands then, instead of um, along the regulated area? That's just a random number, I think. Yeah. But they ended up in... Or at the top of slope, perhaps? Yeah, I would think that you know, they were in there where the plantings were. You know, it makes it, you know, if this area gets cut, the no low zone, if there's a marker, but it's not supposed to be cut because it's supposed to be not maintained. Am I, am I hearing things correctly? Uh, well, no, no, they get cut maybe once a year or so. so. I'm confused. It's a, it's a no mow, but they're keeping it in that out, basically. I think that's what. Yeah, that's what this well, is. It's more like a sometimes mow. <laughs> <laughs> it's an annual mow. So, so maybe the so, yeah, I would say the plaques are just along the, the proposed vegetative boundary. Yeah, if you're yeah, along with the plant, within the plantings. Well, not within the plantings, because then they could get buried within the plantings. That's good. But then mm -hmm. they can't be seen. That's good then. If they're not, they don't get. <laughs> I thought. 
Uh, that may be good from some viewpoints, but not for necessarily from ours. I mean, well, we want to be able to see the fact that there's no encroachment. Hmm? There's no, they're not seen and they're in here, you know, that means that there's probably no encroachment. So. Uh, is the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, is that wetland boundary? Yeah, up here. Yeah, I don't know, at some point you could almost argue that we still have an upland, I mean, we do have an upland review area off of that boundary with work being done, so it's in our purview. It, I don't want to get into the minutia of is it a violation or not? It's, it, you know, if you, you keep the plaques along the, the new pro, uh, proposed planted boundary. I think that's a reason. I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. It's fine. But, you know, I just, I have to point out, I, I got to point out a couple of things. One is you keep talking about regulated activity. This is the wetland right here. Mm -hmm. it, it's a defined wetland by a soil scientist on a subdivision map. As far as I'm concerned, that's a wetland. This is a regulated, this is a, a significant direct impact along there. Be that as it may, um, I'm not saying I disagree with their remediation plan, but what I'm looking at here, this area here, it, it doesn't drop off that much. It's grass, and there's a significant track record here of um, storage. And if this doesn't have markers or, or rocks or guide rail or fencing, that's going to be filled up with stuff. Because, you know, this is the third or fourth property um, that this tenant, owner, applicant, whatever we're referring to, has uh, violated the wetlands regulations with outside storage and materials. So I really, personally, I, I'd like to get it so that we can, we can get this so that we discourage another encroachment. Because it's costly for the town to keep doing all of these um, enforcement actions. I mean, it's not. From my own point of view and opinion, I would like to see that restored to the wetland line all the way to where it was on our plans. Does that get into a gray area of the, the DE? So a soil scientist was paid to go out here and delineate the line. A developer, just guessing, may not hire someone and pay them unless they were required to do so for, say, a permit with DEP. They're the only ones that would have had right. purview of this. So there, there could have been a permit issued with DEP for this subdivision, and they could have allowed a certain amount of filling in that permit that we don't know. I don't even know this right actually, now. Actually, that's not true, because a subdivision doesn't approve any site development. It only approves road development. But, Site de uh, or subdivision or a site development would have either could have gone up to DEP for approval at that time. Right, and we have a site plan in our files that shows that it's 22 feet. 22 feet. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, it's yeah. not quite what this is showing. So that's why I'm saying I, yeah. I don't think that they're misrepresenting. I think that I, again, I'm I'm not disagreeing with the fact that. You know, sometimes you got to just go with the flow and say, all right, um, this is getting restored as an upland buffer, where it, some of it may have been wetlands. And, but what I'm saying is if they're going to do that, put the markers out here so that they can't put storage stuff in there. It's just too, it, you know, it's too inviting. It's too inviting. Yeah. And if they sell it to someone else. They're going to mow it and turn it The people, I mean, anyone moves in here, I mean, we all would do it. I see you know, what you're saying now. I, I, yeah, I understand more. And, and so that, that really leads me, at least, to say that no mow area should be part of this whole restoration planting plan. Um, otherwise, it, that was apparently a historic wetland that was delineated by a professional in the field. And you're um, allowing it to be a upland 
buffer instead. Well, so there's already there's, a compromise. Right through no. here. True. Right here, and there are there are pine trees there. They were big and healthy. And it could have been through previous filling and planting. No, but but they're down done. low. They're, it's in a depression. And those pine trees, they're probably they were probably like 50, 60 years old. If you want to see a photo, I have a black and white photo. But, over. Uh, before but you get into the white pines being in uplands, because I think that's where you're going, I've delineated swamps with white pines oh, in, I know. in uplands. But, but these were, you know, normally they show signs of weakness and growing, but, but they weren't. Now, these were big and healthy pine trees, white pine trees. And to mm -hmm. me, that indicates an upland area right here. You know, and did you test the soil? Did you look um, I think Tom Peters did. I think there's a marker right through here. I think. The, the one thing I'm having, I'm also confused with along the lines is with Petrus's delineation is it just it just seems to die at the property line. He only looked. The, the line that's shown only goes to the back of the property boundary. It doesn't extend onto the property itself. And if it does, please point it out to me. No, that's, we, we didn't ask him to check up here. <clears throat> but, you know, the, again, this area here, we're saying that this area right through here, you know, was, if it was a filled wetland, it was filled before the regulation. I don't, e I don't even know if it was a, if it was a survey. On the plan, if it was drawn on by, it was oh. done by basically Tom Petrus's old boss, Ken Stevens. Yeah, but he's not a surveyor. No, it's but a survey. It was a survey that was it was an A two survey or what uh, kind yeah, of survey? Yeah. Was it? Let's see. I hereby certify class A two, and it has a note saying that the the uh, like, wetlands like, are marked in the field it, by Ken Stevens. Marked in the, yeah. We're trying to. My clients are trying to propose to do a, you know, in an area that's a gray area. We're not trying to, to fight it. There were, those pine trees were two feet, three feet. Yeah, they were, not, you know, and, and the first reaction of Tom and, and Matt were looking out there was, that's wrong. You know what I mean? So we're talking about what happened in the mid 80s. I can show you hundreds of maps where people were wrong. That's wrong. That was wrong. They were not, you know, he made a mistake. How far was he off? Five feet? Six feet? We don't know. We're not here to argue it. We're here to come up with a remediation plan, which is why we didn't take the position of we're not going to do anything in that area. We took it, the position of we're going to try to do something in that but area. But it sounds to me that staff had an issue with this area going into this, uh, and that was never addressed. So, Tom... What, what, what do you mean? Well, Scott's saying he had an issue with this piece of right. property. I don't know where it was, and our position was, it's not a violation. We don't have to find it. Oh, okay, we need okay, to address okay. It. Okay, but you're saying it's not a violation. Why? What? What's? Because what's it was the done before the regulations. Okay, so not have the soil scientist determine professionally whether that is or is not. We could sit here and look at white pines and talk about them, uplands, wetlands, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not done in the field. He did look in that area. We had him specifically look in that area. Okay, but the wetland can't stop where it stops and it doesn't go anywhere else. I don't understand. No, that isn't, we, no, we had him look specifically in that area because of the wet pines and he, there was, in, in, the line was on the other side of the pine. So there were at least, that line that was on that subdivision map was at least, I don't know, 20 feet off, 20 feet off to 15 yeah. feet off. Yeah. So once we established that, it was off, period. It was off. Now we focused on remediation. So did, so did Tom do test pits in this area? Thank you. Well, I thought oh, you this was December, to... okay, of 2016. Um, and let's see. Oh, there, yeah, but I don't know where it's, he doesn't, he doesn't have test pits of locations, um, in that area. Where is that then?
Now, I'm just trying to figure out what we're trying to accomplish here. Are we trying to have them remove the fill, or are we just trying to have them plant some trees in there? That's the question. That's the question. <laughs> what are we having them do? And what... From the A2 survey that we have on file, it was a well. So but we agree, here, we agree I, Scott, it was done before. Well, here's what I was thinking. So before we've one, got this A2 survey. It's not a uh, real large scale. So, you know, I, I understand what uh, Attorney Thomas is, is saying. Um, in that you never know how accurate. I mean, is it is the line here? Is it eight feet over here? Is it 10 feet over here? And what I kind of envisioned was that when Tom went out to do the test pits, he would have done a bunch of test pits to say that, to tell us where this line actually was. Okay, it's drawn over here, but by looking at a couple of test pits, he finds out that the line really <coughs> is over here. I did not anticipate that the line would be way back here. I mean, that's, that's really far. And it's coincidentally, it's right along the property line. That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Um, so that's where I was coming from. Um, I didn't expect to see that wetlands line all the way back to the property. I figured they'd say, he'd say that eh, it's, it's about somewhere in here and he can't quite pin it down until they actually do some excavation, you know? Okay, um, so how about we take that, that, that currently demarked line and we, and we pretend that it continues sort of straight for now and we they, have him plant, plant trees to the wetland side of that. Where, and, where are you talking about, like right here somewhere? Talking about 30 feet, let's say 30 feet off the uh, exist the garage. You see, we take that line and you just continue to the left. Oh, the the wetlands line that they have, and, and just yeah, cut and it just, right across. And just the have them have them plant trees and shrubs to the to the uh, yeah, the that, north of that line, and and, 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 and cut the baby in half. You're talking about this line here. And, and that's what you, we all would anticipate because as, as uh, Jeff said, it, it doesn't, the wetlands line isn't going to come over here then all of a sudden honor the property line. No. You know, well, there's a number nine. I don't know. It's going to keep going. It. So. No, that's, that's, ex that's uh, proposed. But the I mean, wetland that's, that's where is, you no, today. The wetland, I that's anticipate, is going to follow up. Oh, yeah. Right, this contour. Because it comes down this so way. So right here, well, this, the soil gets pulled back. But that's a proposed contour. Mm -hmm. Yes, but yes. It's going to follow the original contour. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Absolutely. So, in the original contours, if you look at the contours, bend back in like this. So, what I'm thinking is a good compromise, if you don't want to go crazy with trying to do testing and locating, if, if you took this wetland line here and you extended it across here like that, and just move these plantings, I don't, you know, you, you have the plantings follow that. And then this area that's left, do the meadow that, like you're talking about, it's a buffer area, I guess. And what all I'm saying is put, a couple, put the markers here, here, and here, so that they, they're not going to be tempted to go beyond the driveway. It's a gravel driveway. It's not an asphalt driveway. And that way, the markers are here. You got a little bit of grass, uh, or, or can we move some of these boulders? How many of those boulders, boulders would be add add boulders. boulders? No, I mean the boulders are in the are are, are, Hold on are a far into the into the, into the wetlands. Well, yeah. We could take those, there one white those last in that depression? six boulders and put them along the driveway. Yeah. 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 I mean, no one's if they can't get through the driveway, right. they can't get back right. there anyway. Yep. Yeah. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Put in here. So we're talking about just this space mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. oh, this now, what's what's the? Um, do you guys need to get access? Do I do I see a propane tank or something there? Um, can you, 
propane. Where, where, where is the tank? I mean, here's the property line. It has to be 10 feet away from the property line. It's on the left side of the barn. It's on the left side of the barn. It's not on the back side. Okay, hold on. Let me get this again. So, whoops. Oh, I hate that when it does that. <laughs> yeah, Let's get this. Where did my menu disappear again? So it's right along the side uh, of the road? A little bit closer to the corner. Circle. Right in here? Yes. So you get to it, obviously, by walking along the edge of the barn. Service, yes. So it's underground it's or above ground. that? Above ground. Oh, it's above that. Okay. There's another one listed right next to the pop property line up closer. No, that was removed. That was removed. That's an old property line. Uh, can I say something? Come on. Why don't you come up, sir, and introduce yourself for the record. Thank you. Doing. My name is Jim Delamedico. Uh, going right, back to the, the, the boulders, I'm going to put some good sized boulders. Nobody's going to be able to move them by hand. So, no, no, you know, you're going to need a machine to, they're, you know, 30 some odd, 35 inches in diameter. And uh, I've done it before on another site. And Scott, you have to agree with me on it, but those boulders I put out there, they're perfect, aren't they? Yeah, I think boulders are a good solution. Oh, no, the sides. Did you see the size I put on the, yeah. the other yeah, issue were, where the, the chips were pushed across the property line? Yeah, you can't move them. You can't move them. I think that's enough. Whoever's really that's concerned. That's what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trees are great, but uh, those rocks, you know, I don't know how many feet apart, but nobody's going to use that property. Even if I sold it later on, somebody wanted to, um, they're going to be hard to move. I mean, it, you know, you need a big machine to move it. I, we've been there. We're original owners. Um, I, um, we are spending a lot of money to put the trees and plants in there. We're going to pull back the gravel, um, and um, you know we're going to do a good job. And I'm trying to. We're trying to compromise with you guys. And um, we're not. Uh, I live in town. I have a business in town. My kids live in town, and uh, I feel like. Uh, Got brought up that I had a couple of issues. I don't think he should have brought that up. That's nothing to do with this case. But I had another issue where I was renting a piece of property. My men pushed the wood chips over on the other side. They did fill it in. I corrected that situation. I had it all pulled down. I put these big boulders there, and you could take a ride by. There, um, nobody's going to try to uh, move them. Some were probably a couple tons each. I just had to get some bigger boulders. They're solid. They're going to be there for 100 years. I mean, some, some of the plants might not make it, but the boulders are going to be there. And I think that's a good way to, you know, to calm your fears about somebody else. I am not going to do it again. But if somebody else buys my place, they can do it. They'll be, they'll be shut down. All right. Do you have any other questions for me while I'm standing here? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks. I didn't respond to the my client did of the other the issues with the other properties, but and I could have gotten into it and I could have put my positions in, but there was no point. They don't belong before the wetlands commission right now. We do have uh, I finally located the map that was done by uh, um, Tracy Lewis and Tom Petraeus' report. You can see on here test hole five. Located right here. Uh, located. Yep, here. Test hole five. Jeff, that's the survey I handed to you before. The survey, there's test hole five somewhere here. Right here. And here's the, and I, I know this was submitted with the thing in test hole five is listed down there. So it was not a wetlands. So Mr. Stevens, that map in, in, in was dead wrong. Now, how wrong? We don't know. For all we know, it could have been 30 feet off, 40 feet off. 50 feet off. Could have saw the redox features, depending on where he took his sample. Ken Stevens may have been within 24 inches. Tom saw him 24, you know, below 24, so. Right near there were two, three, two or three, two foot, three foot wide pine trees. So, so the, I think the area that, that we were talking about, yeah. by taking that wetland line, that Tom Petrus delineated right there and, and basically 
Yeah. I'm just using the hand tool. Yeah. So, it. so from um, here. From here, and then just a straight line across to, to the shrubs, you know, is like 10 by 80. It's a much more realistic well, right now, line. The way the grading plan is now, that wetland line is probably going to come right through here, through here, through here. So that's what the plan almost exactly shows. But that's you know, not really what the grading So that's 376 is what you're saying. That wetland that's elevation probably, that wetland's probably going to be 375, I think. I'll have to check the uh, elevation in the back. But, so the wetland line is going to come right through here. And we move those shrubs up in that corner. That's there. Right. Well, you're saying that those shrubs you're proposing are wetlands plantings, then? They're not yeah. buffer, upland buffer? Um, well, they're kind of, these are on the bank, yeah. No. These over here, not these over here, but these over here. No, I kind of envisioned this. Now, as you can see, I have the wetland symbol here and here and here. So I kind of envisioned this. So, so my question is, if, if these are wetlands restoration plantings, why wouldn't, and over here you had wetlands restoration plantings, but then you have upland buffer plantings. Why are there not upland buffer plantings there? Because that's where we had the, the driveway was through here, which it was using that driveway, which he kind of wanted to keep to use it. And we were asked to remove the driveway, um, and which we did. Um, and you know, replace the NOAA seed mix there. Right, but you were asked to remove this driveway and encroachment over here too, and you put a buffer there. Well, that's off the site. Yeah, that's so the we're to restore that to So you're putting a buffer, upland buffer, next to the restored wetlands off the site, but on the site you don't want to put the buffer because. You know, you could argue that this is will still be a buffer, still going to act as a wetland buffer. We're still removing that driveway out of there. Um, well, I mean, one reason could be they want uh, oh, more of an open view. And and I wasn't really questioning the buffer. I was saying just put some boulders or something there to prevent them from storing and using the area. You know, I think we'll, that's fine. Uh, Matt. And I think he agreed. He agreed to do that. Already, so. That elevation three seventy six. That we're talking about, see how you were saying it almost Fine. hits the Fine. line that we're talking about. To, to resolve this, he'll put boulders along that line and ten feet apart. Okay. What I was going to say is that three seventy six elevation that cuts into that tree right there, right where your hand is. I was going to say, can you, you know, that's pretty much what we were talking about. If you had the line on the other side of the tree, you know, between the shrub. The ILX and was I don't know if that's Mesa Rubrum or not, but probably. Um, but I, I I think that's pretty much what what we're talking so about. So you're saying just, I can just draw this straight. Pretty much, yeah. That's fine. I don't know how it works with the you know those existing grades though, so I'll leave that to you. Well, it's, it's only you know two feet difference from here to here, so that's not okay. It's not that steep. So I'm, you know, we're, we're trying to get through this, this whole process of these things. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if, and uh, you guys can help me out here. I'm wondering to, to put some um, closure on this. Um, you're going to have an approval letter uh, eventually, I'm assuming, <coughs> that's going to um, kind of put it in, in writing. And they're going to have a plan produced that also uh, kind of shows what's going to happen here. Um, do you want, why don't we, because this isn't a formal application where they're under the clock or anything. I was going to suggest that why don't you guys revise the plan per our conversation. And in the meantime, so we don't lose too much time here, um, I, I, well, I guess the other question is when you in, in, expected to do this, because I was going to suggest you revise the plan, I could work on a draft approval. At the same time, we can kind of get together and make sure that they mm -hmm. that they uh, match each other, and that at the next meeting, that can be submitted to the commission for them to kind of vote on. Or, uh, 
Does that sound like something doable? The other, only other issue that comes up is October. When will you, I mean, there's, there's grading work here. There's a, when, when is this, what's your plan on when this would get I would like to start some of the grading as soon as possible before you know, winter. So it's, it's probably too late now. Yeah, and, and my thinking is you really shouldn't do grading now because then it'll sit all winter. And, and is there an issue just to wait, get the approval, but do it in the spring? Excuse me? Is there an issue with waiting until the spring to do it? Yeah, I'd like to get it over with so we can hang it on for a while. Yeah, I don't know If, no, I mean, you, you would have your, going through this process, you'd have the approval. It's just, we would, if you're doing grading back here, we would want you to stabilize it with something so that it's not kind of over winter. Um, that's in an erodible state, that's all. And, and basically in the spring, you can go in, do your grading, do your planting. So I'm not... So it's not like we're um, we're pushing to get it done now. I just throw it out there to see where I got some gravel and stuff. Like to peel that off ahead of time in the driveway. Yeah, it, it, oh. back, well, back here too. Yeah. Back there too. Like some you gravel. can take off the peel back the top gravel, and I want to get rid of that first. And then you know, and I'm in the tree business, and some springtime I'm busy. You know, it's hard to it's a project, but almost. Uh, you added how many more shrubs now in the But the, the 15, 20? We've got almost up. But if you planted them now. I'm not going to plant now. Okay, well then you'd be planting in the spring. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the difference is you'd be doing grading and then doing your planting in the spring. Um, yeah, so that means all winter long we've got a monitor. It's not a grade either. It's not a steep grade. It's but maybe there's a way of saying, yeah, okay. Do, do it in a fa in phased, a, a phased approach where you remove the gravel, put your silt fence down, then use that silt fence in the spring down at the bottom of the bank to and do the rest grading. of your grading. Yeah, yeah like grading. wouldn't you, wouldn't you do the, like if you did the grading now, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you overseed it with something yeah. that, uh, right and, the and then now. in the spring when he puts the plants in, he's got, growth established that's preventing invasives and you're just digging the holes where the plants go and you leave the grass there and then as the plants get bigger they're going to then choke out the grass and, and by doing that it's going to prevent invasives from coming there's in. There's a lot of natural stuff that's growing in there, all the wetland stuff. Like if, you, if you guys came out, I thought somebody was going to come out, it's heavily weeded there, nothing's going to wash. I mean it's thick. But if you scrape off the gravel, then it will wash. What's that's, that? if, if you scrape off the gravel, however, it will wash. That's that's. I think where we're going with that. That's what well, the they're other stabilization after you move the, the other bank option is just to leave right along the wetland edge through here, leave that intact, and remove all of this, and you'll have a depression. And if it rains, the water is going to collect in the depression and will flow into the wetland. Go on the gravel into the wetland. No, but but yeah, but it'll, yeah, and so you'll have. Uh, what, uh, I don't know if these are that helpful. I can leave a buffer here. Well, oh, you leave a, like an undisturbed, so undisturbed kind of buffer. buffer or something. Well, the other part of this too is um, what's the area of the off site. Are, you know, oh, what's out the area of encroachment? See this well, here. Let's get one That's so probably right on the property line. At the time this photograph was taken, it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's probably right on the property line. So you're looking. This one is looking back towards the front, this one, and this one. <laughs> it's a bit driver. Well, this, we must be in the shadow of the building because think, because I think, yeah, the, yeah, I think know. this one is, where's the building? I think this one is right here. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to show you, you know, when you look at the back one, you can see the growth along the edge. Uh, well, weeds will, will grow. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Weeds will grow. So, um,
So what did we, what did we come up with? I kind of like the idea of, of excavating the upland here and then leaving that as a sedimentation basin. Well, I think Scott had a good idea that they're going to figure out their revised plans. Scott's going to work on their draft approval. They're going to talk about it to make sure everybody's on, on the same page. And then, yeah, next meeting we vote. And then maybe work out the details with Scott exactly when it gets done and how it gets done. And Your next so, meeting right? is it two weeks. Yeah, I, October think, 25th. I think we're on the same page yes. tonight, right? Uh, is there any part of it you don't, I mean, I'm hearing that, you know, the, the boulders along the driveway, uh, moving the lines, the grade lines slightly so it's on a little bit straighter line. Um, the seed mix, you know, doing a, a plan to do the work immediately, the grading work now, and seed it and leave a little bit of a depression before, uh, so in the spring, he would just finish up that little bit of grading, yeah. go in and do the actual plantings. Um, the additional plantings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that would, uh, so I could, I could kind of carve out an approval draft, and then you can put together the plan. So they would have both of them in front of them, so there's no question after, we, after they do that, there would be no question about, ah, that's not what we meant kind of thing, you know? <coughs> Okay. Un unlike <coughs> unlike a, an application for development, uh, remediation is something that I can do a draft and they can actually see it before you do, uh, right? I mean, they, this is something I can work with them on because it's not a yeah. development. <coughs> I think that's a logical approach. Yep, sounds good. That way we don't waste any more Do you intend resources. on doing it on the 27th? 25th. 25th. Or 25th, I'm sorry. That would be what our plan would yeah, be. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, then I, because I'm not available that night, I'm not going to screw up getting it approved that night. But if you have it ahead of time, I can look at it. And, you know, we're all on the same page. There's no, I'm, I have a conflict that evening. Well, the only thing that might change would be any comments that we would have on the draft approval because you would see it before we did. Right. I could always send somebody else from my office here if necessary, but I don't want to delay it any further so that it could be started. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, unlike an application, it's it's almost like it's it's not so much you participate in the um, deliberation, but your input happens right up to the point where they they vote on the thing because it's it's what it is. You're just kind of working out a uh, resolution to this to kind of together. Okay. Rocky Spillers. You've got a bunch of paperwork here. Uh, uh, it's up to you if you if you want them or not. I'll keep it. Trying, so I, you know, okay, cool. I have them in my. Yeah, I'm to the fire. I just want to put them down. Um, you can get me the plan. I don't want to keep you in your own. Do you need that for the location of the Um, I have it on this. Yeah. Um, that's for the fire right there. All right. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is V1207R, 137 Elm Street, so within a previously disturbed regulated area. An extension was granted to 927.17 for submission of remediation plan. Good evening. How are you doing? I'll be here uh, in Cynthia's place. My name is Sean Hayden. I'm the executive director of the Lake Warmock Task Force, uh, but previous to that, uh, three months ago, I spent 18 years as the executive director of the Northwest Conservation District. I'm a certified soil scientist. I'm a certified professional in sediment erosion control, and I'm a close 
colleague of Cynthia Rabinowitz. We've worked together on countless remediation and um, mitigation projects. And so I'm here, I, while I haven't been to the site, Cynthia and I went over her remediation plan and I just hope to answer any questions that you might have about what she's proposing. From my experience from you know all the projects that we've done together. She had to teach tonight, uh, she teaches a college course and a, a wetland ecology course at CCSU. So I'm just here Sign pinch up. hitting. <laughs> so. I have a couple questions for clarification before you get too deep into this. Cynthia submitted this plan that goes with a report. We, we didn't have it initially because yeah. it was a... I saw that was a blank page in the appendix. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I, had, I had the same question. Okay. So, but then also... Um, uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? It's right down at the bottom of the blue screen. Okay, so this plan here was submitted by the uh, Don't delete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're I'm, hovering. I'm talking while I'm... Uh, uh, I know, it's been a busy day. Yeah. And so on this, this is a different format. So this one here, we got to do something else to blow it up. So that would be over here. Now, hang on. Is that, was that a remediation yeah. plan for this particular property or the one next door? This for this one. This was submitted by the engineer surveyor, and it has different stuff on it. So is this now not yeah, well, meant to be used anymore? I, well, or? I don't, I've never seen this one. I, I apologize. I, is there a date on that one? Well, this is the survey that she references. So this is the data accumulation plan? Yeah. yeah. Well, now, hang on. That's not, is that a room? See, data? this is a plan that oh. brought, brought, brought again. Uh, brought again. Mm -hmm. All right, this is so this is a survey plan. But he, he wrote on the survey plan, this was work that was proposed on the neighbor, and then he expanded his plan to include this work, but then she puts different work, which is this plan, yeah, on top and it of doesn't it. match. So my question is, is this in addition to the other plan, or is it in place of? Yeah, well, it's the same piece of property, so it... Yeah, it's a fair question. I, 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 <laughs> I believe this, it's the same piece that you're still be, you know, showed before. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Well, she did this after you requested more data on the soil conservation. Yeah, but is it in addition, addition to it? Or? No, it's not another piece. Could you, could you bring no, that plan back up? No, not another piece. What I'm saying is, it, is it, they're both the same property. Right. There's, there's more plantings and stuff on... Yeah, right, on, on um, the, hers are different plant plants right. than these. This shows boulders and some plantings going around. See? And I believe that was Paul's original. It was. Product. Right. Yes, it was. And, and she and, spoke to him after the, she walked the property again. Okay, so is her plan... Subsequent to this. Is it taking the place of this, or is it adding mm -hmm. on to this? Well, it's similar in that she's proposing to spread that pile out and... Uh, Install a number of wetland plants. However, I, I can tell them that the, there's a few different plants that this particular plan is proposing as compared to Cynthia's. Yeah, no, that's so, what I saw. Um, I, I, I can't answer that question. I can't All right, so let's leave that hanging. Why don't you guys do your presentation and then take it from there? Oh, I, I didn't have a presentation, but I, <laughs> I just thought I'd uh, <laughs> answer and, questions. But now that now that there's a qu the first question, I'm not even able to answer it. Which, which uh, uh, mitigation plan is the appropriate one? Or which one, Cynthia? I'd, I'd have to ask her if she even has that one. All right, let me uh, ask this first. And uh, Don, I, I, didn't, uh, I, I didn't ask you to do this, but um, <laughs> I, I did some comments this afternoon. And um, I don't think they got the comments yet because, I, oh, you did yeah, get them. Okay, so you yeah. got my comments. And the commissioners got my comments? Uh, yes, that might be a place tonight. to start. Yes. yes. So yes, why don't you start with that. that stuff first? Yeah, I was 
just trying to see if there's a floodplain line on that map. Because Cynthia doesn't have a floodplain map. I don't believe she has one hers. Yeah, the floodplain is something that I discovered this afternoon that both your application and Baghdadi's application, we actually left an uh, email with him asking him to come and uh, he either didn't get it or didn't, chose not to come. But both of you had marked that there's no floodplain on your submission form. And I missed it on his, but on <laughs> yours, I finally realized that yes, there is a floodplain that runs right through here. So um, with a floodplain, just so the commission knows too, um, you're, like you're saying, you spread out this pile here, okay? You're allowed to do excavation, or you're allowed to even do fill in a floodplain, but you can't have a net increase. You have to do compensatory excavation. So that's something to keep in mind, that you're gonna have to have probably Broadingham look at that and make sure that what you're proposing is a um, net decrease in volume within the floodplain. Because uh, you're gonna have to get a floodplain permit. Not a hard permit to get, it's an administrative thing. And it comes after this commission uh, approves of what you're gonna do. It's uh, something we can do in the office, it's fairly easy. There's no notifications or anything like that. So. It's fairly, uh, it's a fairly uh, straightforward. Yeah, it's a certification. Yeah. It's not an insurance problem for me. It's what? designated a floodplain. As far uh, as insurance, think, I don't think the floodplain goes to your house. I think it's the floodplain on this side is about here, and um, if you go on our GIS system that the town has, right. you'll see the floodplain. I think it's about here. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think it touches your house, but it is something to ask him about. Um, it doesn't necessarily, what happens with floodplain is that um, you need flood insurance if your lender requires you to have it. If your lender doesn't require it, you don't have to have it. Yeah, right. Um, but, well, I mean, this never come up before. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they and I've been not. living there for fifty years. So. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, I didn't. <laughs> so I all didn't. of a sudden, now I'm in a floodplain. Yeah, um, that's all I'm trying. Well, to do. it's a low, it's what they call a localized floodplain. That the river is over, you know, off of your property on the other side of Elm Street. Right. But the this is what you call a, a local area. It's it's been designated by FEMA, and it doesn't have an elevation designated. The elevation is something that your engineer has to determine, and there's a there's a booklet that FEMA puts out on uh, methodology to use to determine a floodplain elevation. There's like six different methods you can use depending upon what it actually is out there, but your engineer would need to look at it and, and estimate what the elevation is. Once you know that, they could then look at your house and see if it goes up right. to your house. That's worth knowing. That. Because <laughs> if you go to sell or would ask, you know, am, right. I, am I in a flood plane? But I digress. Sorry. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are we talking? Well, flood planes are related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so, we're, so we're, we're just looking for what clarification on which mitigation plan we're going to So that's go one with. question I had, yeah. And then. Um, the, the other question, big question I had was on this wetland here. Uh, when I went out for well, quite some time ago, I couldn't find this wetland. Well, you and, know. And she couldn't either. In her well, last court. time I was here, some, some of the commission members asked about walking a property. But nobody ever came out that I know of. No, I was there. Were you? I did, I did not go as far back as the old wetland. However, my husband oh, because did. Because to the so left. When you went across that bridge, to the left, it's all hill. There is right. no water. But that wasn't your property. No. It's right. kind of split Yours it. is off to the right. More. Baghdadi's to the left, I right. was to the right. Correct. But um, the only swamp from that point on, though, it's all uphill. There is no swamp back there. It is to the right. Well, that's what we're talking about, that, that this old wetland was at the base of the hill, where the, you see the contour lines 
coming down, and then you see that the, the area that was outlined as being an old wetland area. Um, it, that's, what, that's what we're talking about, is that area. So apparently it was a wetland once upon a time, and for some reason or other, it's no longer. Well, I know that Cynthia had delineated this wetland, uh, I think in 2000, or delineated this property in 2000. That she, that she found out she was there. Yeah, and so maybe that's a line from that delineation. I'm just guessing. So my, from what I read in her report, this wetland, she mentions that this old wetland doesn't have the, the hydrology um, anymore because this area over here was excavated. So my comment was, well then, if this area over here is restored, wouldn't that restore the hydrology to restore this well in it? I mean, why isn't this wetland, this calls for the area to remain untouched. So if this wetland were uh, damaged or impacted, why would that get remain untouched? Well, I think if, if in fact that the site was excavated and brought down and actually changed the hydrology hydrology of that wetland, um, you'd have to literally bring the level of the land back up to its original elevation to actually keep water in that wetland again, that's what I'm assuming. But so, that's not, I mean, that's unless, not being yeah, proposed yeah. maybe because of money or? How much material? Yeah, that would how, be how too. Much, <laughs> how, much money, how much material was taken out of there? I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm getting closer to spending this much already. Yeah, no, I, we're just talking it through. So. <laughs> I've you already know. spent five thousand dollars, and so far, I got nothing. Yeah, okay. I got no. <laughs> you know, I mean, there. It's just a kind of. Uh, well, that's the only part. I, I don't mind spending it, yeah. but yeah. I accomplished stuff. I don't know what I got to do yet. Right. Do you think? Is it, is <laughs> and it just keeps. <laughs> is well, it, it's unfolding. Is what's happening. So, is the commission interested in? trying to get restore the hydrology in that relic wetland? I, I'm just pointing out what, what I saw and what I wrote down. Then these guys kind of have to take things over. Okay. I don't vote. I'm, these, they're the ones that are going to decide. I'm just trying to point out what I came up with and if you guys have any questions about it. The old wetland found, oh, I'm sorry. If that was a wetland, then it was, no, it's not a wetland. It needs to be restored, right? I mean, well, that's, that's where I was coming there. from, but... I'm also hearing that this area was used as a, it was a gravel pit. What happened was he, he had someone, there was a, an arrangement, someone came in, well we know who it was, but the contractor comes in and took the um, gravel out of there. There was select nice gravel. They took all that material out. And so short of bringing all that material back in, I guess what she's saying, I'm trying to understand what she's saying, is that you can't restore that back to a wetland because the um, hydrology um, is not there anymore. I mean, it's not going to hold more. Even though it's wetland soils, they're going to drain out of there because, because the, the um, call it the, the uh, the water table, the hydraulic grade line of the water table is lower now. Okay. Okay. And also, the, the species she chose to revegetate the property with are, have a, things like a, the eastern red cedar has, has a broad spectrum of environments that it doesn't mind living in. In other words, it can be in a wetter, wetter area, it can be in a drier area. It has a, has a high tolerance for a broad range of wet conditions or dry conditions. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'll, I'll be quiet in a few minutes, but I, I just, <laughs> heard that before. When, when I look at that, I see there was a wetland there, okay? So if you're coming in and with a remediation plan, shouldn't you be telling the commission, there was a wetland there, here's what the resources of that wetland were. Here's what we're gonna do to compensate for those resources. Were that, was it attenuation? Was it uh, water quality? You know, what was it habitat? You know, was it food source? What, what 
did that wetland have that you can restore and put back in, in a different way? I mean, that's where I, how I kind of... Well, to read what she said, she said, the soils in this area have been altered, no topsoil is present, and the earth's surface is hard and rocky, and yet there's hydrophytic vegetation growing there. Excavation of the area downslope from the isolated wetland created hydraulic pressure which caused the wetland to drain quickly and not retain water. I don't understand that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain that to me? Yeah, what happened when you, when you took the soil, here's the wetland up here, mm -hmm. they took the soil away. What happens is all the water literally drains. You cut off okay. the groundwater okay. and you drain the bottom out of that wetland. Even though it's a little bit upgradient, it still, when you cut that close to a wetland, and especially in gravelly soils like you have here, it affects well beyond where you cut into the soil. Yeah, it's I think what she meant was it took people. away the hydraulic pressure, and that let right. the water run Yeah, I, right. that, that probably is, yeah. is correct. So, but the fact that there's no topsoil and that the surface is hard and rocky, that doesn't sound like wetland soils ever. Well, okay. she's proposing to put um, a layer of soil back there. It's something that we're... That I, but we'll no, this is something. the area that's untouched, that she said is to remain untouched. She's talking oh, okay, about the... She's talking about the old wetland here. Oh, is the gravel pit stuff just pushed on top of it? Is that why it's rocky now? I don't know. It could have been it could have well, been excavated at some point too. Who knows? It depends on what the original native wetland soil was that was identified there. If it was a Ridgeberry complex, you can have a rocky surface, um, yeah, okay. with poorly drained soils. And then once it's drained, it can be hard and rocky. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott, could you just point out where, so there's wetlands, limited wetlands on the right-hand side of the plan up there, right? And, uh, and it goes around the outside. Yeah, the wetlands goes around the outside. And I think that this area here, which she's calling out as a swale, and, but it, she's not calling that out as a wetland. Yeah, they're erosion features. There, uh, there's there's erosion water. features there? Well, th those are those gullies were created by um, stormwater runoff. Okay, and That's because I was kind of, my impression was that that was kind of created when they excavated it. That's what I thought. Oh, like yeah, they, yeah, I don't think she's calling, you, are you th thinking she should call them out as intermittent water courses? Or, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. I, they're not, right? No, they, she said they're not. They're, so I think what happened was the, the wetlands was over here, and then they over excavated and created this area. That's what I think happened. <coughs> so in a way, they're actually creating. You know, one one thing that used to be here, you know, maybe now it's down there. Now it's down well, that, here. That's what I. That's created. where I was getting at. I was trying to understand what the existing conditions were to see if this is a a larger created wetland that could offset. Yeah, I the think it drained is. wetland. There's nothing growing there, though. It is bare and barren, and well, that's where the we get a rocky. we get a restoration plan yeah. with now, more was, more planting. I was just thinking, compensatory storage. Do we do we need to worry about compensatory storage? They already took so much out of it. Well, that's their engineer is going to run a couple cross sections for me and mm -hmm. show me that there's right. no. That's, net that's really not. But that's yeah. We don't think we have to worry. I'm about just that. pointing that out. I just, I just throw that out. They need yeah. to look at that before they give you the planting mm -hmm. plan, so they don't have to redo it. Gotcha. Well, if that area could become a wetland, that could be compensatory for the other other one that was lost. Um, It's like a larger area, right? It's looks larger and it does look it larger. could be more diverse because you But right now it's nothing. It's just a gravel section. I don't know how much Well the proposal is. is what? Two three inches of topsoil with compost. But I don't think that's the area that they're proposing to do anything to. That's what it says on this one. Am I missing something? Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotta look at the right one. There's the other issue. Which one is the right one? This one, the second, so I think right? the, this one just came small. in. I think the, the first step is to get um, Cynthia's yeah. and this one to jive. Yeah, yeah, which or just like make, put, make a decision which one is it. Or make it clear that yeah, this is what you yeah. guys want to do. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking at this, and one of the things I noticed is she's proposing a berm here. And I'm wondering if that isn't her, uh, uh, you know, 
it's a technique she commonly uses to back water up and to create a, a wetter environment. Hmm. And I'm wondering if that's what she's proposed, you can see it on her plan where she's doing that. So she's, it looks like she's actually thinking about that oh, yeah, relic yeah. wetland and rehabilitating it. Right. Impounding that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, mm, mm. but yes, uh, but there's no explanation of yeah. what that berm is, okay. it, whether it's just a planting berm. I think she says because if it's going to be a, a a decent size, I don't know that a, a berm would work if that down gradient side is cut to the point where it's below the bottom of that wetland and the groundwater is just basically discharging. And if, if they're recreating to that extent, why not just focus on down here and recreate an area big enough to compensate anyway, right? Yeah. Create a planted berm around the lower side of the isolated wetland in the northeast corner of the site. Yeah, planted berm. Five feet wide, two feet high. Purpose of water, it decreased water retention, the previous identified well in there. Yeah, so it looks like that was her intention for that. Um, that well, that's the northwest corner, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know. I can't stand it. Make sure it's not mine. Make sure it's not mine. She forgot her north arrow. Yeah, I don't, I mean, uh, all right, so what, what are we doing here? I mean, we need to clearly, I think we need a clear plan. Right, of what we're doing, and um, I, I would think that Cynthia's plan, for lack of you know her exhibit that was part of her report, should probably be the one that's uh, she should work, I guess, with whoever with the Brannigan or whoever's going to be doing the plans, unless she's going to put something else together. Um, but I would suggest more concentrate on more of the uh, the right side here, the east side, as the a planted wetland. There's some plants that are scattered in there, but certainly it's I don't know. I don't know what. So I, I'd like to see like you know. Do you want to see this sketch plan on top of the A2 survey? That's, that would that's be very helpful. Yeah, a more formal. That's a start. Yeah. And her, you know, her key should be on there. The legend, you know, for like a typical. And because of the different contours in here, it really would be good to get a a cross section to see what's going on with the grades. You're going to need that anyway for the floodplain permit. My only question is, you approved George Baghdadi's remediation, which is adjacent to my property. And that's what he did. He's already finished. Mm -hmm. There's grass growing there, and he planted a few trees, and, and you know, it, 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 the line is right there. I'm over here, he's over here. And that's, it, that's done now. I don't know if you went out and looked at it. No, I heard that he was wrapping it up. Um, we have contacted him about the- uh, I mean, the grass is growing. The flood so. thing permit. And I was, since it's the same engineer, I was hopeful that when he finds out that, right. that you know, he's not entirely off the hook yet, um, I was hopeful that the floodplain permit would kind of just show both. But, um, his, the, the majority of this violation, the, the, it, clearly the majority of it is on your property. Oh, no. It's all. Yeah, his, I would agree. His, his, is, his was this little piece of the hill 
which he smoothed out and he put a couple trees here. Yeah. So yeah, he really them. didn't have much to do on his property. The, the, the real damage was to this wetland and, and along this edge here where all the gravel was taken out. So unfortunately, um, most of it fell on your property. No, right. Yeah, unfortunately. I just still failed to see to the left there that, that there was wetlands. You what? That there's a, to the left mm -hmm. that yeah, there is wetlands there because there's always over, a hill. Over here? No, yeah, no. to the left side. That old oh, wetland right, right, over here? Right there, right. It's on a hill. Well, that was surprising <laughs> to me too because I, I walked up there because I'm like, what's going on here? It's wet. But I see <laughs> wetlands. I, I mean, there there seeps. There are, yeah, seeps there right on the. Green. I've also seen, I've seen wetlands like uh, on a hill in a meadow where it didn't look any different from the rest of the meadow nearby, but yet it was a wetland because mm -hmm. it was a seep. So you Just can't always wetland. see wetlands, <laughs> okay. right? I mean, they're, they're not always perfectly apparent. Okay, so we clear as to what we need? I got my list. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, nice. I would suggest that you kind of touch base with me and, and before the, we meet again with the commission and, yeah, in, in an effort to yeah. try to... Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts that need to be uh, connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to do it or if Cynthia is. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Cynthia about it. We'll see how long. I don't know how long the class runs. But it's, I, it's every Wednesday. Okay. So that's a problem. <laughs> we'll see so, you again. So, <laughs> so um, as far as the commission is concerned, I mean, we're, um, we're not far enough along here for me to have a draft because you don't even have a plan that shows no, what yes. right. mm -hmm. Okay, so it's more like you're doing the plan and I can kind of take a quick look before it, the next, you know, and are we shooting for the next meeting? If that's okay, so the, the, the 25th then, right. so. All right? I'm sure you want to get this over with, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Going on a couple of years. It's been a long haul. Um, he's, he's been responsive the whole time. It's been a, uh, but it's been a slow responsiveness. So. <laughs> I think we're, we're almost there. Almost. almost yeah. there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're moving into high gear. Right, we're cooking with grease. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, how are we doing, everybody? We got right here. Okay. Moving right along. IWV 2016-11, 27 Dogwood Road, Silva. Disturbance and unapproved structures within a regulated area. Okay, so this one, you asked that we meet with him and, and zoning, and and we haven't done that yet. So and the clarification. We're we're not. Uh, they're not ready to come before you. There is a clarification on. Uh, you had asked. About um, you had asked about well, why are they uh, reducing the um, they're, they're reducing the uh, driveway area, and they also had some weird notes on there like uh, to be legalized, yeah. mm -hmm. and so I talked to um, the uh, town planning and zoning administrator, and he told me that. This was um, it, it, that they re already received their approvals from ZBA. And so these additions that are shown on here are, um, in fact, um, they, they have been approved via variances. But this area here has to be removed because it exceeds the coverage for this lot. This is the only zone where there's a coverage requirement, maximum wow. coverage requirement for residential, and they exceeded it, so they had to remove the driveway. And coverage includes asphalt. It's not asphalt, it's gravel. I said, you sure? It includes That's gravel? Covered? And, and they said, yeah, it includes gravel. It's if you have a gravel driveway, the That's driveway, the, the house and everything uh, adds up to the coverage. Which I thought was odd, but that's what I got as an answer. So that's why they asked for this area to be removed. They got into a little bit of a conversation about it and decided that they, okay, for them, all they needed was grass. I mean, my comment was, why would you do that? Because this is 
this is like a little dirt driveway that comes in here, and it's just wide enough for a car. Where are they going to park their cars? Mm -hmm. And what, what I'm concerned about is, well, my first reaction was, they're not, they're going to plant grass there. And then they're they're going to drive on it. They're going to yeah. park on it, right. It's going to be a and, dirt road. <laughs> yeah, and then I thought, well, oh, oh, the comment was made, well, inland wetlands could always require that be planted as a buffer. Oh, but, but my thought was, why would you do that? Because if you plant this out of, as a buffer, where do you think they're going to park? <laughs> they're going to park right down here, closer mm. to the wetlands. Yeah. So that's something to think about. At any rate, um, I'm going to meet with them and the health department. I'm hearing that there's still significant issues with this house. That they don't think the septic system's going to work. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so they got past ZBA, but we still have to meet with them and work out some more things before they come back. So that's where we are. Okay. Is there five decks on there or something? Yeah, there's several decks. There's uh, a bunch of um, landings and decks. I have a lot of decks, so I can't. This deck is being removed. This deck here is being removed. But they added this, they added this deck, and they refurbished this part of the house. So it's it's a problem. Okay. All right, so, so we're continuing to our next meeting. Yeah. Yes. And I'm seeing here the pattern okay. is the, yeah. the, with these remediation submissions, you're, you're just going to have them on your agenda. And we're going to have to get to the point where we can move through them pretty quick. Because I think unlike applications, I think they're going to evolve into, they got to come before you a couple of times. Because you have to take an active role in this and say, no, we want a plant again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So hopefully we'll get in a groove and we'll get through them quicker. We're doing better than we used to. Because when we get applications coming back, you're not going to have time oh, God, to do this. Oh, God, that. Okay. All right? Okay, moving right along. Um, I don't see anything. Scott, do you have an uh, agent activities report? Or? No. Okay, so moving right along. Next thing I see on our agenda, if I'm correct, if I'm not mistaken, is all the way down in, uh, under enforcement, administrative review of enforcement issues mm -hmm. yeah we've got one and I started this last meeting and you guys had some questions about it um, Conrad had um, incorrectly shown this area as uh, or labeled it as an upland uh, and it, it was in fact uh, a wetland at least it showed up on the original plans as a wetland he had a dashed line along the back property line here, which was labeled um, approved uh, limits of disturbance. Mm -hmm. And the reality is when I quizzed them on it, we went through the records, there was no approved plan that showed that. This property is another, <laughs> it's another mess in terms of the file. The, the, when the house came in for approval originally, it was it was actually orientated this way. Somehow it got built over this way. Um, it never went to wetlands. They put an addition on the house that no one ever recorded. Well, hang on. When did they build the house? Was it before eighty six? Eighty five. Oh, oh. Hey. cutting it close. All right. So, nice. so that problem, then, then they issued an agent approval for the pool, even though the wetlands line was this black line, and the pool was in the wetlands. Oh, oh my God. So they issued an that? agent approval for that. And did Donna do that? Uh, <laughs> Donna who? Did Donna. I've only been here four years. <laughs> oh um, so was they did, and it didn't show, all it did was it showed us a box where the pool was going to go. It didn't show the patio. It didn't show like the yard or whatever. Well, it was probably in the grass area. So, so what we, yeah, what we have is there's a, a fence that goes around like this. Right? Now, these are new buyers. They're only there like a year. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. So this goes back to the previous buyers. <sighs> And this fence and this yard have been here for quite a while. What did they do to get caught? What they did was, this is another one where the neighbor had an issue, 
And so this was, it, it, it kind of migrated over to here. <laughs> oh. So now what's happened is, if, if you end up accepting this new wetland line here, yeah. the, I'll show you the photos in a minute. This is pretty substantially wooded here. So if you end up saying, well, you know what? There's not much we can do. They approved the pool. Obviously, the patio was built with the pool. The fence went in with the pool at the same time. Yeah. That's the yard. What are we going to do? Tell these new people to take their yard away? This area over here clearly was wetlands. Yeah. And they, they cleared it. It looks like this part of it over here, they filled it because when you see the picture, it's a very flat, well-established well lawn. And they put large trees, there's very large pine trees now in here uh, that are... Is that, is that, when you say they did it, the well, new Well, the people owners? before yeah. that. Oh, okay. They, they, they cleared it out and then they put trees in that are, you know, and there's grass in between the trees. You think they filled it though? I think they filled it, not a lot, but I think we what know they, they is, did. Well, let me show you the photo. Um, now, did you put the photo right in here with this? I did not. There. Yeah, there it is. So, this is looking from the street in, and so these are the trees, and the grass is pretty. Um, here's the here's the pool. We're way on the south side of the property now. The pool's here, and we're looking north. So you can see how wooded it is here. It almost looks like it goes up a little bit here, too. I'm wondering if when they did the work, they put... Um, okay, so he, this is not the photos I asked him to add. So let's see what he did. So I don't know where he's going to put the photo. This is all by the previous... I asked him, he said he put more photos. That's the only thing I I think this was the photo he added. Yeah, he, he, this one wasn't on there. Um, so I that looks like it slopes There down. was another photo. It does look down. Definitely it slopes well, down. it does. It does. But in the back here, you can't see it. Behind these trees, there's a, it's open. You can see it back in there. See over in here? That's another open area. And there's space between the trees. Mm -hmm. It just... It doesn't look like, in other words, what I'm saying to you is, it doesn't look like a wetland that they just started growing grass in. It looks like they look, they smoothed it over. It's uniform. Are they mowing in between those trees? It looks yes. like they're in there mowing around, making yes. a little park. Yeah, it's very well landscaped. They're mowing in between, but... So I would say that, I mean, it seems a you can see rough back there. to make see these it? people rip up, rip up their pool or anything, so we can't we just say... You know, stop doing anything back there. Let it. You can. I mean, let it. Issue, let it grow back. Just the issue it, is, I'm I mean, not it's stable. It's it's got trees. It's. I don't know they look if happy. they filled those wetlands or if they just planted them in the grass. Well, you know what? With the new owners, how much can we dump on them? I mean, well, I know it's the onus of the owner. But we don't know when this was done either. This, I mean, obviously, it's, the trees aren't from '86. Yeah, and so that's my other question. Like, do we even want to, how far do we want to go with this? Mm. I don't know. If anything. Well, well, can we make them aware that, I mean, these people don't probably don't even know what's going on. They have no idea. So they, if we make them aware, like, listen, th this is what's going on here. We're not going to make you, you, you know, know you want to make knock your lights out, but don't do anything else. A few yeah. of those markers yeah, are on the outside. And then, and then make sure that they know they can't go in there and let it grow. Right, then that continues to go on with them. The, the next owner could go in there, cut it all down, mm -hmm. and all right. So, put a batting given here. given the so time gonna... and how messed up this is, <laughs> do you want me? Do you want me to just have him put markers across here? And yeah, stop and, then, it. and then and then a couple on the fence back. Yeah, here. that's mm -hmm. fine. That's yeah. good. And we call the day and say yes. and stop maintaining behind it. And and oh, and, and this area here, we got the trees. No more cutting of the grass. Just let it go. Just let it go. You might want to wait till December and then say happy holidays. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Instead they of actually, making you put in a new They actually got wind of the fact that... Um, if they don't like it, they can come see they us. Got wind, <laughs> they got wind of the fact that there is that this is on the agenda, so they know that there's 
po possible violation here, and they're, I've heard, I didn't talk to them, but I heard they're, they're concerned. Well, I mean, do I you need to bring them in and explain to them? I don't, or, or are you, I don't think so. We can do that. We can do that. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Is that right. a pool or something? Uh, like a yeah, I know, you're right. Or something on the other side of the pool? Keep, yeah. Keep no, it's just a bare spot. No, yeah. it Straight. does look like oh, a little pond. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Quite yeah. Big holes there. Yeah. Can you, really do like a can you zoom pond. in on that? You, you know, know, like you make those artificial ponds and stuff. Right. That's what it looks Come like. Come to think of it, I think I think I remember someone saying that it, it was like a little goldfish, a little koi pond. Yeah. Those are peaceful. In the, in the wetlands. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. To it's probably yeah, lines, too. I think it is. I think it is a little... Yeah, it does look like a little pond. The issue, pond the issue with the neighbors, is that ongoing? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't ask. I, 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 there's so many violations, I can't keep them straight. I just can't. I mean, does this mean that we have to let them go, too? No, no. There was an issue with the neighbor with permitting. Some type of permitting. See what what happens when people come in for permits. We go out to the properties. Well, that's where your problem is. You got to stop them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things we do is we have just, to go just see. Don't look hard. Are, are there wetlands? Do we need to issue a permit? And so uh, Gabe goes out to see if there are wetlands, and then between looking at, at the property and looking at the GIS information that we have. They don't, they don't match the plants. Anymore. They don't match up, and he sees these things like, "Oh my God, look, where where'd that whole big yard come from?" You know, and mm. and next thing we know, we got a violation. So, but I think you're doing a smart thing, is you got to pick and choose on these things. Right, but right. we want to be consistent too, so that it's not like, "Oh yeah, we we'll let this one go without doing anything," and you know, then you get taken to task because we're making somebody well, else. Well, we are something. doing something. We're going to no, 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 no. markers up. Well, and I think, I I think understand, you're, just... you're also on these things. You're, you're looking at this and you're saying, you know, the, the history of it is not good with the permitting. The, they're, they're not the original property owners. It's been that way for quite a while. And um, there's kind of limits to what you can enforce, too. You know what I mean, if you got mm -hmm. involved with heavily enforcing this, mm -hmm. you'd get into some legal issues about, well, when exactly did this happen, and didn't the town issue permits, and that kind of stuff. Yep. Okay, so the local Okay, so this is going to come back to us, or is it? Or is no, it I'm, just gonna, We're I'm done. just going to have okay. them do done. the, okay. I'll send them a letter, and we'll okay. be done. Okay. Markers and letters. Love it. Okay, okay like moving on to our general discussion or other. Regulation Amendment Committee. Has or it met yet? Has not met ah. yet. Or the okay. Public Outreach Committee. Has it met yet? <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, Anything else for the good of the order? Any correspondence? The don't, don't correspondence know. for the that inter office memo from Gabe. From the uh, it's not on there. Oh, so we're going from the tour of violation the citation process. SHS, what's that saying? Scott Shelton. Oh. What's his name? Shelton High School. I was going to use a different ask. Yeah, a, right. Actually, that's an error on here. Um, recommends issuing order to property owner before issuing. Uh, there, there's, a, there's, there's an error on here. Either the name 15 Owl Hill Road, it's not Dwayne Caruba, I don't think. This is the one with the attorney, right? The, the, uh, no, 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 no. no. Yes, because because that the one with that attorney is the one that I wanted. Or well, maybe it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. There's so, There's so many. many. There's so many. Um, but um, let me just read this for a second. Yeah, okay, so this, this one, this, this, you guys approved a remediation plan. They came before you, they presented a plan, it, had, it was by Soli, they had uh, landscaping, they were going to move the fence that was in the wetlands, uh, they had an extensive landscaping plan, it had uh, mulch beds that were going to be uh, like uh, water quality areas along the planting plan at the edge of the lawn, and and what happened was uh, the property owner, Dwayne Kruba, um, went in and, and 
put up a fence around the pool on the inner part of the yard, and it was very expensive. He notified it. We asked him, well, where's the rest of the remediation? And he said, I'm not going to do it. It's too expensive. And uh, his attorney called the town attorney. The town attorney called me and said, what's going on with this? So I explained the whole thing and um, thought we would bring it to you and let you know uh, about it and ask, well, what do you want to do with it? When's the when was it supposed to be done by? Uh, we're past the deadline. June 24th? Is that? You, didn't, you don't have the file on it. Oh, I remember. Oh, the deadline, the November deadline. 19th. Remember, this. remember, it was that pool and it was plantings. Yeah. November. And they owned like the two, two houses yeah. and he had let his kids live in this one. Yeah. Oh, is that that one? Yeah. And this was, a, we went back and forth. This was like three and a half meetings well, we on this thing. The, the, yeah. He owns other properties in town. Here's the plan. I, we still have it on the stick drive. Oh, we don't have it on the stick drive. No, it's just there. Oh, I remember. Just, we had a long discussion about how, if he was just going to cut off the post or pull the post out yeah. of that fence. Yeah, I seem to remember that. And, uh, and, and we wanted to cut off that. Yeah. I mean, is this a citation, Scott? Is that what we're doing here? Well, you know, that's something I want to talk to you about because what we normally do is we, we issue notices of violation. Notices of violation, there's two things in your regulations that it talks about. It talks about notice of violations, it talks about orders. When I talk to the state of Connecticut, Here's the we're, we're, um, we're kind of unique in issuing notices of violation. The notice of violation says you have to come before the commission and you want to talk to them. It's informal. If, and, and you know the process. If you work it out, you work it out. If you don't, you ask that a citation be issued. We issue a citation and we go that way. Legally, what DEEP is saying is that that's not really the official way of doing it. It may be very effective, because I think it's very effective. Mm -hmm. It's a very effective, but it's not the official way of doing it. So if things go south and we have to rely on the official way and the more legal way, then what they suggest is you kind of start over again and you issue an order. If you issue an order, there's all these requirements in the statute to say right, it has to be issues. within this, it can't be more yeah. than this, you know, 10 days before the meeting you issue the order and you have to have them come and it's called a show cause hearing mm -hmm. and you know it's this legal process and there's a lot of red tape it's hard for us to do all that mm -hmm. so we don't like doing it so one option here is to just issue the citation and go that route but wait a minute didn't they came in they presented the plan it's one they yeah. the we went back and forth about the plan for a couple meetings yes and then they agreed to the plan and we agreed to the plan and now yep. they're saying we're not doing the plan. Correct. So how is this any different from 1413 when we did a citation? It's, it's not different. It's not so different. let's issue the citation. Okay. And then if, if there's a problem with that, then you, you always, my, my comment to the deep was, you know, we always have the, the order to fall back on. Because, you know, we have time. Okay. Do, you need a, do you need a motion for this order or can you just... Do it on the right, the right deadline and dates and. No, it's no different than an administrative approval, uh, uh, administrative review. You tell me you're giving me advice to or a directive to issue a citation. So well, I think we could we, we I mean, at least in one other case when we had this exact same situation, we've issued the citation. Yeah. And in that case, the citation process brought these people back in to right. at least okay. try to work on it. So. So I that's, we're working on consistency. Do we have, do we have uh, ability to find people eventually? That's, that's what the citation, the citation is. So it, it'll go along with a, you have 30 days. And the citation fines people $150 every day from the day we issue the citation. What happens though, it goes to the citation hearing officer, which and is one of the. he cuts it back again. Which, with the hearing <laughs> officer, which is a, a, an attorney who is an ex commissioner. So she understands wetlands. Um, she hears the application, and her job is to uphold either uphold my decision or, or, or our, our decision. Not your decision. No, it's my decision. Yeah, I issue the, the um, citation. 
So she's oh, deciding I if I was, if it was legitimate for me to issue mm -hmm. a citation. Okay. So she, what she does 99% of the time is she keeps the hearing open and she says to the applicant, look, I'll make a deal with you if you cooperate, you go to the Wetlands Commission, you get the work done and you stay on a schedule, I'll close the hearing and I won't levy the fine. And that's how we've been operating. And, but if you don't stay on schedule and you don't cooperate with the commission, then I'm levying the fine and it goes back to day one. Mm. So if it takes a year to get it resolved with you guys, yeah, and grand. Like, yeah. like the one you refer to, and they get an approval and then they don't do it, we can issue the citation, it goes all the way back to day one and it's a sizable amount of money. We always make the, the you know, we're, we're telling them, look, it's, we're not here to do punitive action against you. We don't want your money. We want you to fix the wetlands. We think it's a very friendly way of doing this. And then uh, if all of that fails, then we go back to day one and we issue an order and then go through the actual court, you know, yep. uh, file a here. court case against them and the whole thing. That's usually with a real big one. So that's just a little... Or somebody story. who just continues to say, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and we currently have, there's only one that I know of where we actually went through the court action and they owe us like something like, it's over 100000 So that, we, there's a lien to put on the house? Yeah, and, the house. and that's what it's coming to. But that's, a, that's one where there's a court case with Newtown and, and Monroe. And oh, wow. Is that a wetlands or a zoning? It's wetlands. It is one. Oh, and it's we're in litigation okay. right now mm. about it. Hmm. That, that whole thing came up at the same time he was doing the commercial property. Right after. Yeah. I think it was right after. Is it, what was it, like an insurance that came in or something? Or how did he get caught? I don't know what you're referring to at the moment. <laughs> this guy, Aruba. So this was... Oh, a, this one you're talking about. This is the house. He, if oh. I remember correctly, didn't he, he inha did he inherit the house from his... And then he's letting his... That's right. He's no, letting his away or something. the brother passed away and it got left to his ex-wife and the ex-wife sold it to the other brother. This, this owner, I, I think that's the story. And, and he actually came to us as part of the purchase because he wanted the, he wanted the uh, violation resolved. And many of these come to us. We don't go to them. He came to us because he wanted the violation resolved as part of his purchase. But now that he's purchased it and he doesn't want it, it's yeah. too much money, he doesn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But he did do the fence around the pool, but, but he, he did doesn't, the, want, to, he he did, doesn't he, want to cut out the other fence, he doesn't want to put the planning thing. That's correct. Well, the fence around the pool is probably a requirement from zoning. Right. It's a requirement from, so, from, the, from the building department. building department. Yeah. Yeah. Only he put a very, it's a wrought iron, very nice fence around. Yeah. Now, if, he's, if they're not in, in, in violation of, of wetlands, does that stop them from getting other town permits? We typically don't hold up permits because of other permits. That You, you can't really do that. That's, that's, each permit typically stands on its own. Although I am aware of there is a program where we don't issue permits if people owe tax, back taxes. But tip, but a lot, you know, I was actually involved in a U.S. Supreme Court case that we actually lost. Okay, is and it time to make that final because motion? Of that. Yeah. yeah. Move that we adjourn. Okay, so we're we're. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> so we're. we're <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just for clarity's sake, before Donna, we make that, that final motion, we are. Uh, you're going to issue that citation. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll notify the property owner that it will be issued first, and then if there's no immediate response, then I will. I will entertain my favorite motion of the evening. I already made the favorite motion. Second. All opposed? All, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Means adjourned. I love you. Well, what time